Welcome to Power Play for January 15th, the date of the second NDP summit where provincial leaders have gathered to share the secrets of seizing power and keeping it with their federal cousins. We'll have a current NDP premier and the party's BC leader, who every poll says will become premier next spring. They're all coming up to reveal their advice. Also ahead, Vancouver's police chief will be here to preview tomorrow's summit on finding ways to improve the economics of law enforcement. And Canada's climate change ambassador will be here to put all this weird weather into context and update us on what happened at last month's climate change conference. But first, it took an emergency plane change to get it off the ground following a failed generator, but Canada's heavy lift helping hand has left for Mali. It will briefly deliver supplies to French forces fighting al-Qaeda jihads in the besieged West African country. Here's how Defence Minister Peter McKay framed the mission at the Trenton Air Force Base earlier today. There's a region of the world right now that is uh, deemed to be quite unstable. And uh, as the Prime Minister has indicated, uh, we have seen a deterioration of the security situation in Mali. Uh, Canada has a history of having supported Mali in the past. Uh, we have an obvious interest and stake in, uh, in seeing stability uh, and democracy return to that country. Well, despite our modest contribution, Canada wasted no time in urging the embattled Mali government to get back on track for free elections to restore democracy. Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird was invited to appear on today's show, but he's traveling. But here's an excerpt from a diplomatic note his office sent earlier today. Here's the statement. It says, Canada supports the return of a government in Mali whose political legitimacy is achieved through free and fair elections, as endorsed by the Security Council. Any legitimate government of Mali must restore confidence of both the people of Mali as well as the international community and strive towards political stability. For his take on the conflict, the contribution, and the consequences of action or inaction, we're joined from Winnipeg by Foreign Affairs Minister Lloyd Axworthy. Welcome to the show, Mr. Axworthy. I'm curious if you're thinking, good, is Canada's cautious military engagement the correct response in your view? Well, I think you have to be cautious, but you shouldn't always be so ad hoc. I think these kind of turbulences, uh, changeovers in countries, the uh, threat, real risk to people uh, are not going away. They're, they're going to be part of our world for a long time. And I think to, we need to have a very clear set of policy guidelines so we know when, where and what to do and how to do it, as opposed to simply uh, reacting to to the events themselves. So, uh, and I think what what is clearly going to have to happen is that uh, one plane will not a mission make. Uh, the problems in Mali are manifold, and uh, just calling for a government to hold an election again is not the re resolution. There's two to three hundred thousand displaced persons. There's a whole raft of child soldiers let loose. Places starving. Um, to bring stability and order is going to take, again, a, a major commitment, and we have to be ready for it, and I think we have to explain to Canadian people why. I was going to ask you about John Baird's official diplomatic note. It registers some concern, and I'm wondering what it suggests to you. Uh, does that mean Canada doesn't have confidence in the government right now that's fighting for its survival? Well, as you know, this is a government that uh, arrived there by the coup d'etat route, they weren't elected, they displaced the elected government, which uh, for a while seemed to be on a very good track. I mean, there was a, Mali was one of the poster boys for African democracy for a period of time. Canada uh, made a big commitment, a $100 million aid package, uh, gave it one of the chosen uh, spots for support. And then uh, because of the, uh, probably people call the, the Libyan uh, effort a catalyst that brought about a major change. They released a lot of weapons and a lot of soldiers into Mali. So the whole thing has just kind of gone topsy-turvy. Uh, but it's been taking place for a while. This is not uh, just a weekend event. This has been uh, building over the last uh, several months, and we should have been ready for it. I mean, uh, I don't want to keep on an old uh, refrain, but you know, when we developed the Responsibility to Protect idea 10 years ago, it was to say, this is going to be a constant area of international community responsibility to protect people who are find themselves in these war-torn areas. 
And uh, you can't simply do it by reacting or being uh, sort of uh, responsive only uh, on a spot basis. You really have to kind of think through uh, carefully and have the right criteria to, to determine what actions you're going to take. Yeah, it sounds like the Americans and even the Brits are going to escalate their help, not with boots on the ground, as they say, but certainly with intelligence and uh, communications. Is that something you think Canada should be moving into, much like we're still doing in terms of training in Afghanistan? Is that something we should transfer over to Mali? Uh, well, yes. I, you know, this, this is, I think, the kind of uh, partnership possibilities we have. There's, there's plenty of... Uh, well-developed well troops in ECOWAS in the eastern region of, uh, of Africa in places like Ghana and Nigeria and other areas. But there's particularly a lack in a place like Mali of a bilingual capacity, our, our ability to have uh, both languages being used, uh, communications uh, responsibilities, uh, rebuilding responsibilities, training. So th there is a package of peace-building uh, initiatives that could be offered uh, as we did in Afghanistan. I mean, we had a, a pretty much a full court press going on. And I keep coming back to the point that uh, you can't go around simply uh, picking and choosing. You have to really uh, have a real plan. You need a blueprint as to what you're trying to do. In Africa, I think as, you're, uh, as uh, the defense minister commented, is an area of increasing uh, importance in the world in terms of its resources, its growth, uh, its emergence into the a state, world stage. Uh, so Canada nearly needs a good African policy, particularly one to deal with these issues of where there's major uh, turbulence and turmoil and the civil war and conflict. Well, as always, it's great to hear your perspectives on this, Lloyd Axworthy. Really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Okay. Well, thanks for the invitation.